Dear students, in this video on thermodynamics, we will study different thermodynamic processes and isothermal and adiabatic processes. So, let us begin with thermodynamic process. Uh, first, isochoric or isovolumic process. So, it is the thermodynamic process which takes place at constant volume is called isochoric process or isovolumic process. For example, melting of ice can be treated as a constant volume. You know that when ice melts, there is very little change in volume. Volume changes, but the change in volume is negligible. So, melting of ice can be treated as isochoric process or isovolumic process. So, let us look at this graphical representation, PV diagram. And you can see that here the volume is constant throughout. So, change in volume is 0. And the work done in this process is, work done is P delta V, change in volume is 0, so work done is 0. And next is isobaric process, means the process which takes place at constant pressure. The thermodynamic process which takes place at constant pressure is called isobaric process. Now, if melting of ice or boiling of water takes place at normal atmospheric pressure, then they can be treated as isobaric processes. So, let us look at this PV diagram. Here the pressure is constant and this is isobaric process. Change in pressure is 0, delta P is 0. Now, the work done in this process is P delta V or P delta V is equal to R delta T. So, the work done is R and change in temperature is final temperature minus initial temperature. So, the work done in isobaric process is R universal gas constant into T2 minus T1 or R delta T. So, these are isochoric or isobaric processes. And now, let us talk about cyclic process. The thermodynamic process in which the system returns to original state after undergoing many changes is called cyclic process. So, let us look at this a graphical representation, PV diagram. So, one changes this one you can see and after this another change and it is returning to initial state. The initial state of the system is this one PV and it undergoes a change along this path. Here the volume and pressure have decreased and then it goes back to initial path, in, uh, goes back to initial state after this change. So, this is a cyclic process, you can see, once again, okay. one change and the second change back. Now, work done in cyclic process, now see work done is P delta V and you know that from PV diagram, work done is area under PV uh, di um, graph, under graph, but for this one, for cyclic process, the work done is area enclosed by this loop. So, delta W is area enclosed by the loop. And for clockwise loop, the work done is positive. So, you can see that if the loop is clockwise like this one, then the work done is positive. And for anti-clockwise loop, the work done is negative. Now, if this loop is anti-clockwise like this one, then the work done would be negative and isothermal process. So, 
as the name suggests the thermodynamic process which takes place at constant temperature is called isothermal process temperature constant hai to isothermal process for example melting of ice at 0 degree celsius or boiling of water at 100 degree celsius these are thermodynamic processes the change in temperature is zero and equation of this process you know that equation of gases pv is equal to rt now temperature is constant r is also constant so pv is equal to constant so equation of a of an isothermal process is pv is equal to constant and let us look at this pv diagram so we have this change at temperature t1 we can have one more graph at temperature t2 and these graphs are called isotherms these pv diagrams or pv graphs are called isotherms and just look at this one here you know that p is proportional to t so at constant volume when volume is constant pressure is proportional to temperature so pressure for this one is low and pressure for this one is high therefore this temperature t1 must be greater than t2 so t1 is greater than t2 right and let us look at this one so we have a cylinder and a piston and a gas is enclosed inside it okay now the cylinder should have perfectly conducting walls and perfectly conducting piston and why perfectly conducting so that it can exchange heat with the surroundings it must be able to exchange heat with the surroundings the temperature of the gas must remain constant so exchange of heat takes place with the surrounding the change in temperature should be zero that means agar aap piston ko niche la rahe hain to is uh, gas ka temperature increase hoga and heat must go out aur agar piston ko upar le ja rahe hain to gas expand hogi iska temperature kam hoga then heat must get inside it so that temperature does not change and okay so for a gas confined in a cylinder the walls of the cylinder and the piston should be perfectly conducting and the process of compression or expansion must be extremely slow so that exchange of heat with the surroundings is possible to keep the temperature constant all the time so the process of expansion of gas or compression of gas should be so slow that heat exchange is possible with the surroundings to keep its temperature constant and one more interesting thing you know the relation for specific heat specific heat is delta q upon m delta t and here delta t is zero change in temperature is zero so specific heat is infinite so specific heat of a gas for isothermal change is infinite you can give any amount of heat to it and adiabatic process so the thermodynamic process in which no exchange of heat takes place between the system and the surroundings it is called adiabatic process so uh, there is no exchange of heat between the system and the surrounding for example sudden bursting of tire now if a tire burst suddenly then it will not have enough time to exchange heat with the surroundings and propagation of sound wave in air when the sound wave is traveling in air uh, the speed is so large that it cannot exchange heat with the surrounding air 
so that can be treated as uh, adiabatic process. Now, equation of this adiabatic process is P V raised to the power gamma is constant, where this gamma is ratio of specific heats of gases, molar specific heats. Gamma is C P molar specific heat at constant pressure upon C V molar specific heat at constant volume and equation for adiabatic processes P V raised to the power gamma. So, very important relation this one and this one also you have to remember it and now let us look at this uh, P V diagram and another one. Now, these PV diagrams are called adiabatics. Ye PV diagrams ko hum adiabatics kehte hain and now system ka system and surrounding ke beech mein koi heat ka exchange nahi hona hai. So that means the wall of the cylinder and the piston should be perfectly non-conducting kyunki heat ka exchange nahi karna hai as you do in a thermos flask. So non-conducting walls and non-conducting piston right and no exchange of heat that means delta Q is 0 and for a gas confined in a cylinder the walls of the cylinder and the piston should be perfectly non-conducting the process of compression or expansion must be sudden so that exchange of heat with the surroundings is not possible. Exchange of heat with the surroundings is not possible. So, agar aap isko suddenly compress kar denge, to ye bahar se heat exchange nahi kar paayega, temperature bhar jayega, aur suddenly expand kara denge, to bahar se heat nahi le paayega, aur uska temperature kam ho jayega. So, um, like thermos flask, anything kept in a thermos flask is an example of adiabatic change. And specific heat here, sorry, look at this one. Now, for specific heat, you know this relation, C is equal to delta Q upon M delta T. Now, here, this delta Q is 0, so specific heat is 0. So, in isothermal process, specific heat C is infinite and in adiabatic process C is 0. That means, specific heat of gas can change from 0 to infinity. It can have any value. It can have positive value and it can have negative value also. Specific heat can be negative also. And now, adiabatics are steeper than isotherms. Let's see. So, we have one adiabatic and then isotherm. This is isotherm and this is adiabatic, right? And we want to find out, we want to find out this thing, that adiabatics are steeper than isotherms. Now, steeper means we want to find out the slope of the graph. And from this, the slope will be change in, look at it, this is, change in pressure dp upon change in volume uh, dv this is dv this is dp you know that slope of this will be this height upon base altitude upon base so dp upon dv we have to find out dp upon dv for isotherm and adiabatic so let's start with isothermal process so, equation for isothermal process is PV is equal to constant. We have just done it and differentiate it. So, differentiation ka relation aapko pata hai. First term into differentiation of second term V, P, dV plus second function into differentiation of first function dP and differentiation of constant is 0. And from here, I can write this V, dP. Keep it on left hand side and take this to the right side minus P dV and then dP upon dV. Just bring this dV to the left and take V to the right. 
you get slope of isotherm as minus p upon v you get it slope of isotherm is equal to minus p upon v and let it be equation number 1 and now we will find out slope of adiabatic. So, equation of adiabatic process is P V raised to the power gamma is equal to constant. Now, differentiate both the sides. So, here we have first function P into differentiation of second function. Now, up V raised to the power gamma ko differentiate karenge. So, you will get gamma V raised to the power gamma minus 1 into dV. Remember, differentiation of x raised to the power n is equal to n power samne a jati hai x raised to the power n minus 1. So, ye wali power samne a gai aur yaha pe power 1 less ho jati hai. Same thing is happening here. Gamma samne a gaya aur power upar gamma minus 1 ho gai into dv. Okay. And uh, plus now second function v raised to the power gamma into differentiation of first function dp is equal to 0. Differentiation of constant is 0. Okay. Now we are going to change the sides now. See. Okay. So what we do is uh, take this term to the right side it will become negative. Look at it. P gamma V raised to the power minus 1 divide by dV and then take this to the right side V raised to the power gamma. So, when you change the sides we get this as minus P gamma V raised to the power gamma minus 1 upon V raised to the power gamma. Now, just look at it. Yahan par V ki power 1 less hai se. So, jab isko isse cut karenge, to aapke paas 1 v bach jayega. So, you get minus gamma, this gamma into p upon v. Or, the slope of adiabatic dp upon dv is equal to, keep this gamma outside and inside bracket, I can write p upon v. So, slope of the adiabatic is gamma into minus p upon v. Slope of isotherm is minus p upon v. So, in place of this, this is slope of isotherm. That means, the, from these two equations, slope of adiabatic is equal to gamma times slope of isotherm. And the value of gamma is greater than 1. You know that gamma is Cp upon Cv and Cv is greater than, sorry, Cp is greater than Cv, so gamma is always greater than 1. Therefore, the slope of adiabatic is more than slope of the isotherm. Or we can say that adiabatics are steeper than isotherms, as you can see here. This is isotherm, this is adiabatic, and this has got more slope than this one. So with this I come to the end of this video, thank you for watching it.